Welcome to the Electronics Basics series. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell icon to get notifications. I'm doing a video every day. So make sure you come back again tomorrow. So in today's video, we're going to talk about transistors again. In the first one, I'll just sort of introduce you to them a little bit and went through some basic information with them. I'm going to expand upon that a little bit. And I'm going to talk about transistors as amplifiers and talk about biasing and some other configuration stuff. Now these aren't going to be absolutely definitive and just going to give you some concepts to consider. If you want to know more about a specific way of doing something then you need to do a search on Google and look for a specific way of doing it because I'm not going to go into great detail, I'm just going to give you the concepts. As we discussed in the previous one, a transistor can be used as a switch, right? And that's how a lot of times it's used, special digital circuitry, it's just a switch. So you've got a signal coming in and you've got a resistor and then you've got your transistor here like this and say in NPN case you've got an arrow here like this pointing out and that could be going to a ground or zero volt, right? And then you've got your output coming from here and that's your zero volt switched. So when that's positive, that's negative, all right? Basic switch example. If you want to do switching, that's absolutely fine. It's what it starts. A transistor has a linear and a saturated region. So if you look on a curve tracer, which I know you guys wouldn't have done, but if you look at curve tracer photos of transistors on Google, you'll see what I mean. I actually have a curve tracer and I can actually demonstrate this, but I'm not going to because it takes too long. On a curve tracer, you'll see something like this as the waveform that comes out of the transistor with relation to voltage and current. It's a proportion and then you've got this linear region and then saturation which means that's the point where with any more voltage slash current going in you don't get any more voltage or current out that's a, that's the saturation point and that's the region you want to be in when you're doing switching you don't want to be in here when you're doing switching you want to be in here when you're doing switching so you need to know what that maximum voltage is in order to get saturation so that could be you know 0.7 volts dc saturation in order to get that point there this as an example right which would be a certain milliamp rating as well depends on a data sheet look at that and that will give you whatever your output capacity is so for switching you want the saturation region for amplification you want the linear region which is this bit here so you're going to be in this region which is a lower voltage and that could be you know 0 0.1 volts up to 0 0.6 or whatever it may be and when I'm talking about application it means you're getting a signal and you're making it bigger not just turning something on and off so you've got a similar sort of setup to this but you have other things going on, such as biasing, and you may not actually attach the emitter directly to zero volts or ground, where it may be. You'll attach it to another resistor, which will be tied down instead. Assuming you've got negative switching, it could be a, a parallel pair, so you've got a, a push-pulse network, so you've got one going to negative, one going positive, which I demonstrated in the last video about transistors. So let's say you've got an amplifier, very similar setup. There's a difference here as well, there's a couple of options you can actually do here. So we'll do the transistor again, again, NPN, triangle there, coming down. Now instead of going straight to ground, we're going to put a resistor in there. I and mean, we're going to call this ground again, slash zero volts. Now this works a little bit differently. You can see we don't have the resistor on the base now, although we could still have one. But the reason we've omitted that is that we've moved it to here. It's got effectively the same function. So here we're limiting the potential difference between the base and the emitter to be 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volts max for switching. If you move the resistor over here, you're still going to get the same. But what's going to happen is this point won't be zero volts, they get pulled upwards the end of the higher voltage here so if you got say three volts coming in you'll get 2.6 volts here it will get pulled upwards but obviously that will depend also on this resistor value and what you actually select for that so you may have to choose that choose that one as required but what the effect of that is is that the end up with the output here not being zero volts either this will also be 2.6 volts so this then gives us an offset and a bit of biasing so it's one little trick we can do if you don't want to have the full offset voltage here, you don't drop that much, you know, depending on what your input voltage is here, you still put a resistor in there, but you might mix and match those to, to shift this voltage here up and down. Now the reason you might want to do that is because you've got an AC signal coming through it. This may be a DC offset as well, so sometimes there's a DC feed, so I'm going to tap this off, and you have your input signal coming in here, which could be AC signal, like an audio waveform or something, then here be a resistor going up to say plus 5 volts DC. And that'll give you a biasing. Just as an example, and you might even actually, in that case, you might even have a capacitor just here. That's DC blocking. Maybe I'll talk about that in the video. So right there, big capacitor. So DC cannot go back into the AC system. Depends what before it may not, may or may not matter. But audio will pass through that capacitor. And then that'll give you this switch on state. But what we get here is if it's got, say, you know, a small AC signal like this coming in, which may or may not be biased. By that means it may be plus or minus voltage, you know, above and below zero volts. 
but you don't want the output to be plus or minus, you only want it to be above zero volts, but still maintain the integrity of the waveform, this will offset it by 2.6 volts. So you still have that waveform, but instead of being centered like that, like it will be on this point, it will be offset. So that's zero volts there. So the distance between here and here would be that 2.6 volts. So what that means is that your audio waveform then won't get any clipping. But if you exceed this input too much, the waveform will get bigger and it will go below that line. When it tries to go below that line, it can't go less than that. So it will clip, it will go flat. All right, so you get a flat line and then you get the waveform like that. So it's about to go positive, but it won't be able to go negative. The most it can go is, negative, is zero volts. You can't go below that. Unless you've got a split rail supply and stuff like that, but in this case we're not talking about that. So if we're doing this bigger waveform, you know, if you're doing that and be a flat bottoming in this case, and then you'll get another waveform like that, which means you get a lot of distortion. So if that was the case, you'd actually want to increase this offset even further by maybe making this resistor bigger, increasing the voltage there, and I'll shift the whole lot up a bit more and create a bigger bias offset and shift that up again to get that so it's not flat bottoming in this case. I should also point out that if that's your output, that will likely also be tied to the 5 volt rail or whatever it may be. It might be 12 volts or whatever. Right? So that's then push pulling. That's pulling it up, this is pulling it down. Which you've effectively created then is a resistor divider, a variable resistor divider, depending on the active region of that transistor. So obviously, this is just an example based on a single transistor amplifier, not a push pull amplifier. So a push pull would be slightly different. Obviously, you wouldn't have this pull up here. Instead, you have a pair which are tied together, which I showed in the previous one. So you got transistor here, which would be a PNP with an arrow going inwards. If I draw an arrow going inwards, that'd be great. PNP arrow going in, which would go to the 5 volt rail, or whatever. And then you've got your output here, which would then be tied onto your other transistor's output, which would be the NPN. Alright, so then you've got the resistor there. Actually, it should be a resistor here too, most likely. Could be resistors. Depends on how much you want to slam the power supply rails but usually you want to allow a bit of buffering then these are obviously opposites of each other so you can't turn them both on at the same point maybe maybe you can maybe you can't there might be some driver circuitry here which runs them or could be some kind of resistor network or diode steering or something like that. even a second transistor in here which has done that split those off and that would be your output there instead with this same waveform and then you'd use say this to do the offset between your 5 volt rail and your 0 volt rail to make sure you're not clipping your chain. If you want to know about these particular circuits, you want to look for push port amplifier, which is this type, or single transistor amplifier, which is this type. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. And another thing which I probably haven't explicitly stated, I'm not sure if I actually have or not, when you pass a signal through a transistor, it inverts it. So if you've got, say, a DC signal, let's say you've got a square wave coming in, right? I was going to do a square wave. Let's just say a switch state. Starts off low, goes high. Is infinity before that, infinity after that, okay? So then you've got your transistor switch here, NPN transistor, again, just in this case, it doesn't really matter which way, you could actually do it either way. What you'll get in the output here is go to ground with a pull up resistor for simplicity, standard switch. What you'll get on the output is the opposite. You'll get a high state for infinity and then a low state for infinity. Because when this is high, on a high state, this turns this on, which then pulls this terminal downwards to ground. Right, it's connecting these two together. And also in a PNP situation, well maybe it's not obvious to you because you're new, you're a newbie. In a PNP situation it's the opposite. When it's in a low state, it goes high. So in a PNP transistor, it's reversed, it's a different polarity. An NPN transistor is based on having its emitter going to ground. And a PNP is based on how going to a positive voltage line. So a PNP transistor, which is denoted by an arrow going inwards, that's your signal line there instead. Actually I should probably label this, shouldn't I? Base, collector, emitter base, collector, emitter. I'll just draw them upside down for simplicity's sake. Usually you keep the same orientation maybe, but so you've got the emitter here going to ground, this could be going to plus five volts. For example, or 12 volts or whatever it may be, or three volts, it doesn't really matter. But it's the same principle that applies though. You still need to have that 0.6 volts differential or so for saturation, you know, 0.6 volt between the base and the emitter. But this is minus 0.6 volts. Okay, so on an NPN, this is plus 6 volts, or 0.6 volts, get that right, between the emitter and the base. Alright, so that's 5 volts. This point here 
has to be 4.4 volts for saturation or 4.3 volts maybe that's that much below this voltage then this will become the opposite of this so I use the same square wave infinite low infinite high the output of this will be infinite high infinite low exactly the same as this but it works the other way around so on this one this section is what's turning it on on this one this section is what's turning it on don't forget to click like and subscribe and I'll catch you next video tomorrow bye wrong hand again bye